Okay, welcome to the Real Features podcast. We are very excited about today's guest. He is a director and a producer of the documentary film Green is the New Black, which will be featuring at the Melbourne Documentary Film Festival this month. Along with this, he is the lead singer of the very successful heavy music act In Hearts Wake. He is a busy boy. We are thrilled to have him with us today, ladies and gentlemen, Jake Taylor. Jake, how are you? Thank you for that intro. I'm still getting used to hearing um, the word director. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm good. I'm good. Like I, like I told you guys before we started this, um, I was out clearing, um, getting, we've got a lot of um, privet and things that have kind of grown back since white man came in and did a huge clearing for dairy back in the day. So like you've got a mix of natives now and, and um, pioneer species and also things that were brought into the country. And so we're trying to do a bit of regen on this new land that we're on. So I've been up there on the hill all day and I'm feeling quite, as they say, a uh, fire drunk. By, yeah. Um, yeah. Strategically managing land. So yeah. I, I'm good. I'm, I'm pretty high on the hill. From all the smoke, <laughs> to be honest. Man, you were living it. That's awesome. Um, but just on, you know, you said about weird hearing about the word director but you know, you're a musician, lead singer, and now producer and director. I mean, how did you find that experience during making Green as the New Black? I guess putting uh, that new hat on. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot of work. Um, but that's the DIY game, to be honest. That's how we've always done everything, um, especially being heavy music, which most people in the mainstream at least don't understand. Like you don't just, you know, send in your demo into radio and like hope that you get like a pop hit, you know, that's going to be played with our music. It doesn't work like that. It's much more underground. You've got to get on that stage and work rooms. If it's 10 people or 50 or hundred, and it's always this DIY ethic because there's not a lot of resources involved. So we're always doing our own, like we were setting up our own lights, everything. So yep. with that in mind, that's kind of like how we approach this movie was all right. We've never made one before. Don't know anyone who makes movies. Let's give it a go. Yeah. Wow. I love that. Yeah, we were actually uh, in a hit band ourselves, uh, playing in front of thirty people <laughs> back in the day. So we, uh, we know the uh, we topped out at thirty pe- people, I think, man. That's what, that was our our peak. Well, it yeah, could have it, the, the peak yeah, could have been the peak could have been higher. Just it just didn't feel right to keep pushing for the peak. You know, that's that, it's it's, yeah. it's, what, it's what happened for us. Thirty people for so long, man. You know, we just yeah. keep pushing and pushing and trying yeah. new things. Yeah, it's so cool, man. Um, so, I mean, we should, probably should talk about the doco, obviously, to just give a bit of context. But for those who haven't seen the doco or the previews, it centers around your band in Hearts Wake and their quest to become carbon neutral in both touring, but also recording the new record. Um, and obviously, during the doco, it gives us a, a really good idea of where you guys are coming from. But has that always been something that as a band you guys have been pushing for, like the environmental side of things from day one? Yeah. Uh, well, maybe from day, let's three. say, let's, let's say there's 10 days in our yep. lifespan of 16 years, you know, for the first two or three, we weren't because we were just teenagers in high school. Mm-hmm. Um, but as soon as we left high school and what do we want to write about? What do we give? What do we care about? What makes us the happiest? It was like just the beautiful places that we were privileged enough to be able to live near. And that's the, those are the places that filled us up. And yep. in that, you go start touring the world and you start to see that all of the venues are in not the uh, most, how do I say this? Like, so like the social, there's just a lot of, lot of, lot of challenges, let's just say in the social areas and stuff and not a lot of green. Like you look at a map and it's like, where's the nearest park? And you'd be yeah. lucky to find on the cigarette bus in it. It could be like 10 miles away. Yeah. So that being said, it's like this fight and this sort of will and, desire to protect and uplift those places that make us feel so full and whole and it just you know gradually snowballed from planting trees for records 10 years ago to then what's the next step and then here we find ourselves at a cliff's edge that being how do we offset something and then it's like well and then you're in you've jumped off and you dive in deep and then it's just a whole pandora's box yeah yeah, your work work ethic is pretty amazing. I mean, obviously, to to be successful in a band is is you know such a massive effort by itself. But but the you know I guess what you what you've been able to achieve with that with filmmaking and everything you're doing with the carbon neutral stuff. I mean, 
you it's so eye-opening watching that um i mean we are environmentally conscious but seeing what you, it feels like we've been nowhere near it can, can you know so we're watching this it's such a but so powerful watching that and sort of seeing even you know to the degree that you do with your records with you know all of that is you know recycled um you know material and the packaging and all that sort of stuff it's just um yeah quite remarkable how you yeah, did all that. I know there's not really a question there, but it's just more of a statement. Oh, thank you. Thanks. Comment on that statement, Jake, please. Yeah. <laughs> it's nice to hear that reflection because, to be honest, you know, it's, uh, yeah, it's like oh, we haven't really put ourselves out there that much. We've had we've had a pandemic that's just like really halted things for the last few years. We've played maybe four or five shows. We're able to sneak in in the last, you know, three years now. Yeah. And when there's no energy coming in, which is, let's be honest, like we all love making music as musicians, but it's half of the joy. The other half, if not more, is actually having that live experience with, yeah. with people. And when you take that away and you don't have that, that energy coming back in, yeah. um, you can start to not forget, but like you can be like, yeah, there's, no, there's no, nothing fueling that. Yeah. Um, uh, and it starts to shift and evolve and change. And I think that's perhaps where we started going to this film journey like, more and more heavily because we were able yep. to, because we had time off, but there still wasn't that energy to go, uh, not to validate, but to just be like, well done. Or like, I like what you're doing. Or there was just, we're kind of in the dark. Yeah. Yeah. And we've had a few cinema screenings, you know, 50 or hundred people. And it's been really nice. Like, yeah. it's, it's a reminder and a reassurance. Oh, like what we did was, is uh, important, I guess, to, to many people. And that, has been really nice. So hearing your, yeah, hearing that, it's like, I forget sometimes. That's right, we play in a band and we play music and, <laughs> yeah. and we made this film. I've been, my head's been in a fire on the hill for the last you know, all day. Yeah. I forget, but so thanks, man. Appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, no. Uh, it's, was, yeah. Oh, sorry, you Paul, you go on. Oh, I was just going to say an extension of that. I mean, how how's the response been from other bands? I mean, you're obviously touring with a lot of, you know, bands and stuff like that. Have they taken notice of that? And have you seen that, that you know, they've, sort of changed or or had that realization moment that they could do things differently and and how much of an impact you know the smallest things can make have they have you had um any sort of response so far or it's been mixed it's been yeah. mixed like i think a lot of musicians already as they've said so challenged enough already um with what's yeah. just happened that they're like like it's almost like oh really like you're gonna make it harder for us to do what we do like there's a bit of that resistance and eye rolling. I've kind of caught wind of a little bit mm -hmm. and some sort of, yeah, just, but I think that that, that eye rolling and is just because some people feel threatened by the change as we all do. We always feel threatened by the change, but I, I believe that once we realize that this change is necessary change so that we can thrive, then it's like, Oh, it's not a threat. It's actually like part of a solution. And yes, it will be effort to change. So there's a, that I've, I've experienced that pushback and felt it a little. And I think that's happening more actually within our scene, not because they're not receptive, but just because we're already in the underground and trying to make it work. There's not a lot of money and resources going around. So it's harder. Yeah. It's harder. It's a, it's a privilege to have this change. Let's be honest. Yeah. Um, and whereas the bigger acts, I think like have them, you know, they got so much money, like mm. some of the, what they're getting paid to play some of these like big festivals they could make change happen, you know, within a few months, easy, I believe. And I think that's yep. how actually we might see the, the change might be more receptive once it catches, catches yep. fire, catches hold. Yeah. Yeah, yep, for sure. And, and I feel like a lot of those things, it doesn't mean you have to transform everything straight away. It can be, you know, smaller things, you know, even the example in the documentary where, you know, you want to blow something out, like normally there's confetti or something or whatever it is, like balloons or whatever it is at the end of a show but you want to change that to make it so it's not blowing out crap that's horrible for the environment. So you're using leaves, um, you know, which is a really cool thing. And like in so many ways, it's metaphorical and it fits perfectly. Um, but yeah, it's about like, I guess those little things. And if bands can then start to go, all right, we can slowly change these things. Um, you know, that hopefully that has a kind of a momentum thing. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be, I did mention money before, but um, it doesn't have, it doesn't actually have to cost money to make change just want to re-emphasize re that i think where the 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 costing money in quotations like comes up is more that it takes time yeah to, to, to look at what we're all doing and like take a pause when we just want to move forward 
and that either means employing your staff, your stage production crew or whatever, whoever that is to look into these things. Um, but I think we'll all find that it'll actually be cheaper in the long run because we'll make decisions that won't involve like, you know, blowing up a, an atomic bomb on stage. And that's actually like, yeah. you know, 10 grand cheaper in your stage production. <laughs> and so I think, yeah, particularly in stage production, there's cheaper methods and it can be yeah, switched over to like lighting and uh, other creative ways. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think you even touched on that in the documentary, like the, the projection and using things like that. Mm, yeah yeah projection lighting exactly yep. and you know what i actually i really i've got a they, these things called co2 jets um mm. if you've seen the film you guys know but yeah. i mean everyone listening i'm sure they've been to a gig at some point in their lives and there's these big columns of like you know what looks like white smoke but it's so loud that it's deafening over the music <laughs> yeah mm. yeah like and like I've, I've had that we've had those on stage and i remember like when you're playing they're so loud that it drowns out all the music of your own band and you're like it startles you as, yeah. as <laughs> and they're effective in their visual thing but they're actually so annoying and yeah <laughs> and realizing there yeah that we just call them yeah yeah get the co2 jets like that's what you did to be a big band yeah and then so then we'd like wait co2 we did we did chemistry wait what is that stand for? And like, <laughs> yeah. oh boy like it's just like a it just became a word like kleenex but you just yeah. don't you know it's actually tissues and like you just yeah. Yeah. So anyway, I'm I'm rambling, but yeah, there's a whole there's a whole slew of things. Yeah, for sure. Um now we're we're a movie podcast and in this doc this is one of the smaller elements of this documentary. Um it's really just touched on, but you spent some time in LA and you did a bit of acting. Yeah. Is that that correct? So what can you take us through that and what you were in or how that all went? You we're not talking to the next Jared Leto here, are we? Or you know. No, you know why? Because it's such a hard gig doing that stuff. So, um, but yeah, I just thought like, I was in a really, like I'm in the place where it all happens. What's that like? And so, yeah, I, I registered to become like a, to give an extra mm-hmm. and you get like casting call outs, like regular, I'm still getting them now on my phone. They just don't know that I'm not in LA. And like, it'll be for all kinds of shows that we all watch. Yeah. Um, and yeah. I, so I was, yeah, it was Glow, was the, it was a oh. Netflix show called Glow. Yeah. And um, yeah, that's, so I would just, I would get up, you know, get my cast call the night before, like, yep, yeah, we're shooting you available. And I hit yes on my, you know, hit on the app. And then they're like, all right, cool. You're, you're on call 5 a.m. This is your location. So I'd get up, drive in the little, little buggy car, like head across <laughs> on the freeway. And it's already so busy, like yeah, just yeah. packed full of cars. And then you're lining up with people who are doing it. Are they either really curious and just having some fun or they're really like doing it tough Yeah, because they're lining up too and like, you know, before the sun's up and you're getting paid like $13 an hour and they give you a costume and then they take you to a holding room and you wait there all day for the one scene. Yeah, yeah. So it was a great experience just being behind the cameras and um, yeah, seeing how, like seeing the machine and how it all yeah. works. Yeah. And I think like, yeah, that kind of acting I'm not into. Um, I'm more into the, the directing and yeah. Who knows? Maybe one day. Maybe yeah. one day I do something. Do you want to direct more things? Yeah. Yeah, it comes it comes naturally to me because I see like what I want and I'm so like um stubborn sometimes yeah. and like strong in the vision, like, no, no, it's gotta be like this, you know, like I see it like that. And so that's how I found myself in the director role in many of our music videos, which gave me a bit of confidence where the directors would be like, why, why don't I even hide, man? Like, you should just do this next time. We'll just film. Like we'll do the filming and you just. Yeah. And so that was like, I think that was, yeah. My, my training wheels for just doing something a bit, a bit bigger. Let's just yeah. say. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah. But LA, what a place. Yeah. Where dream, dreams go to like to die and <laughs> the ones come and become true. You know, it's like yeah. this divide of the third world like living conditions and then like right over the fence you've got like you know a trillionaire it's just like so bizarre yeah i like that song you wrote um welcome to la or whatever it's called that that phrase is in it anyway i think yeah welcome to la yeah la yeah. that's it yeah, man. It's a good yeah. Song. thanks man yeah, yeah it was it it came to me when we were like around this time when i was doing extra work and malibu was on fire and you know we're at venice beach and i just you just look like it's like it's a big bay. So on one side of the bay, you're looking across the water and it's just like the whole entire 
like everything I could see. It looked oh, two-dimensional. Wow. Yeah. It looked like it could just be reach out and touch it. Yeah. And it was just on fire. And then I'm looking like around our house and our little apartment and trying to do yoga in the morning to like get limbo and there's ash just falling from like people's oh. houses. And then you get an earthquake and it's like yeah. 7.1 magnitude earthquake and it feels like you're on a ship. And you just yeah. go, what is this? is just insane. What am I doing? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, you sort of talked about like that you you would be interested in potentially directing again. Like, have you got any idea? Like, have you thought about that? Any projects? I mean, I see it seen also in your documentary you had um, uh, from the Sugar film as uh, Damon. Um, I forget his last name. Damon. Gamma, uh, Gamma. Yeah, that's it. Gamma. Um, yeah, you know he's done some amazing stuff as well. Um, you know, is it is it that sort of you know? Would you consider you know? I don't consider myself a documentarian, like where I just take on other topics. Um, yeah. Maybe, maybe there might be a story that's so inspiring. It's like the world just needs to see this, but it have to be something real, not a research project, but like real, yeah. like, like someone doing something in some environment. That's just like mind blowing. Um, I would rather do, I think I'd rather do like a, probably I'd do like a film film. Unless it was for the own band, you know, my own band doing a number two, Green is New Black number two, yep. whatever the next the next phase of that, I think that I'd rather do a film, and it would have to be, it have to consist of the things that I love in order to like, you know, like the subject matter has to be things I want to do in my spare time to make yep. it work. Yeah, for sure. That's awesome though, man. Like go into the the fictional kind of side too, maybe. Yeah, fictional, I like but but I, I would probably pick a true story if possible. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Or, or like directing it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's your, that's the opportunity. <laughs> yeah, or inspired by true events, something like on the lines. And I do a lot of um, survival skills, like nature. I hate the word survival skills sometimes, but that's what a lot of Americans. Oh, survival skills. Yeah, yeah, we know yeah. what that is. In Australia, they're like, "What? You must be out shooting things." And it's like, "No, no, no, no." <laughs> but like, um, you know, weaving baskets from natural oh. fibers, building shelters, f- friction fire. Yeah, living on the land with nothing essentially is like the Dude, idea. Are you into the TV show alone? I've seen all of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, mean, <laughs> I can't it. believe I can't believe how, it's, how much it's blowing up. Yeah. Like, it's massive, isn't There's it? Australian version coming as well, apparently. I know. So, I almost yeah. apply. I almost. I was going to say you should yeah. be in that. Yeah. I, I I believe I would have got close, <laughs> not not because of like my level, but because of the interest of like oh like someone quirky like he plays in a metal band like maybe yeah. we'll, we'll give him at least another audition i think that i feel like but i just i just looked at my calendar i was like i just can't it doesn't it'd be right now it'd be we'd be out there right now yeah like they should how do you reckon hour. you'd go be honest how many days are you doing what would be the uh, breakdown like how would you go would, out there i don't think i'd be very good to be honest um i'd probably i'd be lucky to i could do a couple, i think i could push a couple of weeks but i reckon the yep. tw- day 20s and stuff it, would, it could possibly get to a point where I just feel like like you get to a point of realization and clearness that it's like, this isn't worth the money. Yeah. 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 Like to, to, to put my body through that much suffering, but to have a, an experience facilitated like that and the opportunities that could potentially come with that and the things that I would learn, I would still be up for like giving it a go. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe there's this freak thing where you actually do just, you are just given this bounty that's just like, you know, spirit saying, no, we want you to stay for a hundred days and maybe yeah. things change, but you just do it. Mm. Yeah. I don't know. I, I think not long is my, <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, I'd be out. I'd be one of those guys who'd come in and maybe talk crap. And then I'd be out on the first night. I'd hear something move. And then I would leave. Well, it's in Australia. So here's something move. It'd be like, what a, a yowie or like a, yeah, actually it's not so bad at it. <laughs> Like, like I, a, you know, snakes and stuff, like, that's fine. It's bears and crap. I'm like, man, yeah. that's way worse in my Totally. Mind. It's Australia, so they'd be doing it in the outback, Yeah, I, yeah. I think. Or, or they're going to go high country, like snowy mountains where it's yeah. cold. That's my, I think they'd be going for an extreme like that. Yeah. yeah. Probably, yeah. So, anyway, there's, there wouldn't be that fear. It just, I, think just, I think the food would be super, super scarce. Oh, yeah. That's my, that's for my, sure. yeah. there's already not, not that much in Australia. Like, no. Like you need to, there is a lot actually. You just need to know where to look. But it's America seems to like just because it's very seasonal. It's like you got like all these berries and like all the animals come for those berries. And it's very yeah. like animated and exaggerated. Yeah. yeah. In Australia, it just seems much more like it's a bit more barren. Yeah. A bit more like desolate and like, like slower paced still. Yeah. So it's like less of that like 
pioneer thing where you've got to yeah. like yeah so i think that it, i think it'll be an interesting series to watch it will for sure man like yeah. yeah it's pretty funny the latest season sorry we're just making this an alone podcast now but like people are getting so strategic with it i love it they come in like 20 30 kilos overweight like they yeah. just pack on a bunch of weight. And then, and then they blow out their knee because they yeah. can't walk. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it's double-edged. But yeah, I know. It's just one person's strategy for sure. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> um, so back to the documentary. Um, I did notice you guys are doing a massive tour. And is that... Yes. It's, it's called the um, Green is New Black Tour. Like, how are you tying that in? Are you going to be showing visuals and things at the shows? Or is how's that working? Great question. I actually wanted to play the docker at all the venues, but the reality of having sticky carpets at some of these venues, like the pubs, regional places with people sitting on them and standing in, in places that aren't dark, just we just couldn't make it happen. So it's going to be it, the way that it, it, it's really about celebrating the soundtrack and, and emphasizing that like, yes, there is a band actually behind this documentary. Yeah. And so will be some of the things that you see in the doco, whether it's the merch, the stage production, you know, the music, we're going to, we'll be sort of walking that walk on the tour and seeing, you know, looking to new ways that we can, things that aren't in the doco too, that we're going to yeah. be testing out. Um, like we're trying to see if we can get a solar set up we can tour with, you know, to just pave and power, like all the backstage stuff. Yeah. Uh, hopefully the lights, you know, just, just some sort of battery that we can move with. Yep. And um, yeah, so it's a celebration of the film and people will be able to watch it towards the end of the tour. Like we're just finding out how now how to get it online, mm-hmm. um, iTunes and places like that. But it's going to take, it's taking, it's going to take a little while still. There's so much paperwork. Yep. <sighs> um, I just want to touch on as well. I mean, you sort of, um, you, you mentioned earlier about how some bands and stuff like that said to you about how, you know, what you're doing takes a lot of work and things like that but have you found you know that perception where it is a lot of work to to be um carbon neutral i imagine it's like like anything where to start it's more around your habits you know you start off is that sort of what you found where it's sort of you need to change things you need to be conscious of it and then once you get into a habit uh, sam and i are very much creatures of habit so i sort of like a lot of things we do as well once you've sort of got that and you're getting into the routine of it you know, it's quite easy to actually live that way going, you know, and, and, and doing that going forward. Is that sort of how you found it? It's actually quite kind of come second nature once you sort of, you know, change those habits and are aware of, aware of them. Is it? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I just, it's, we're still in that first phase of making that shift to where you use a habit. So yeah, at first it was, like not 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 knowing where, where we even had to cast the net, to be honest with you. It's like, we want to cast a net, don't know how big it's got to be to, to get all the information. Now the information, like we have it and we've got like all our areas of where we emit. Um, and sometimes there might be some unforeseen thing that does pop up. I'm open to that too, but I'm able to just, it's kind of like approaching your tax. Like none of us really want to do it, let's be honest. Mm. But we know, <laughs> we know that it's just, part of what it is to, to be a human in the system at the moment. Yeah. Um, and in doing that, we've actually created systems and setups, whether you use zero or whether you use Dropbox or whether you just manually photograph your receipts or write it down on a piece of paper. Yeah. Um, and you've got an account that just takes all of that information. Um, it sounds like, Oh no, another accountant like that sounds like a nightmare, but you know, we've come up with, I guess we call it our earth accountant and it's essentially the same information that you're giving to your tax accountants, but our earth accountant can just knowing where to look, she just plugs into the same like source of receipts and can just go, Oh yeah. Like, well, that's a flight. That's a travel movement. That was a consumable, like what you ate, drank, you know, did. Um, then she can pick up all the areas. And so I'll just throw them all into folders. Um, yeah. And, and the cool part of all this is like, it was, it seems like extra additional work that one might have to do at the end of every year. It's actually making when it comes to the spending or the, the going to do something, I'll be like, oh, which choice will actually be better for the planet and also cheaper for us to like have to offset in the long run, yeah, you know, or minimize. Do we actually really need to get that thing? Because you know, like, and so you, you actually spend your money more wisely too. Yeah, yeah. that's a good point. Yeah. I found that from the film, that was one probably one of the biggest takeaways I got was, I guess, extrapolating that model onto myself and onto my own 
lifestyle and not obviously to that degree, but it just made me a lot more conscious, which I think you said before, Paul, but a mm. little more conscious about those decisions and starting to think, you know, maybe, you know, what you do in day to day and where you can kind of reduce things. Um, and as, mm. as I get a bit of a follow up on that, I mean, it's probably a bit of a corny question in a way, but I mean, what are some of the little things do you reckon in day to day life that people could kind of do to start chipping away at that? Clothing, we all, everyone wears clothes every day. 99% of us do. There's always that 1%. Right? <laughs> I mean, yeah, we, well, we all, we all want to be, yeah, we all want, we all want to be the 1%, but yeah. most of us have to, you know, it's illegal to not wear clothes in many settings. <laughs> so, but um, whatever you're wearing, like who's making, where does it come from? What's it made? What's it made out of? Yeah. And, and how long is it going to last? So I think like, yeah, everyone has looked down at the t-shirt you're wearing or the, or the dress and just be like, well, you know, whatever. and if you don't, then maybe, yeah, it's a good question. Ask next time you buy one. Yeah. Mm. I think that's a good place to start food. We all eat every day. Um, how far did that food travel to get to your mouth? Yeah. Like if the emissions involved from like, yeah, you know, a packet of pasta from Italy, like it's damn good to get that imported packet, but maybe you just have it once a month rather than having it once a week. You know, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Um, because the emissions on that would be mental. So mm. yeah, look, that the yeah, we can get so overwhelmed so quickly when we start looking at our food, clothing, and we just go, oh, no, like I'm doomed, I'm paralyzed by it all. Yeah. So I think just pick where whatever you're passionate about is actually where I'd start. The more I talk about it, if you are passionate about clothes and fashion, then that's where you can start to like ask. And if you're a food person, go there. Yeah. You guys are doing podcasts. I mean, you're into film, so it's like just finding out. Yeah, like what films and what things can you support that are like, you know, of a solution and yeah. how they're being made? Like, it's just, yeah, I think if we all pick our passions, like it's a good place to start because then we're more likely to speak about it and then emanate that and, you know, send those ripples when we do yeah. have those conversations with those that we love. Yeah. Awesome. I love that. Um, Jake, this has been such a great chat, but before we go, um, where can people watch this film? So you haven't got a spot yet for it. No. So, so Melbourne, yeah. Melbourne documentary F film festival for sure. Yep. Um, it's going to be at Splendor forum, um, which is like playing it. So anyone going to Splendor in the grass, you can yep. catch it on the Sunday. Um, I don't know when this is coming yeah. out, but anyway, it's coming out. Yeah, it's Very like soon. A, <laughs> 10, I think it's like, yeah, 10 a.m. in the morning. We're playing it and having a panel with like um the guys from hack about it yep and then in brisbane we're going to have a at big sound then if you guys know big sound it's a big like conference and we're going to be playing it there and wow. again having a big like brain trust come together and unpack it so there's a few events but beyond that it will be on itunes eventually or doc play or both hoping for a late october don't quote me on it because yeah. I've got a lot of paperwork <laughs> and I'm, it's DIY. So I don't know. I've never rated anything before. So they tell me we get ratings and yes. subtitles. And it's like, Oh wow. Like it's not just upload it onto the SoundCloud. Yeah. Like this is like, yeah. It's a, a film is a whole other level of, of what's required. <laughs> yeah. And, and can, of course, Oh, yeah. sorry, Paul, go on. I was just going to say uh, for the Melbourne uh, Documentary Film Festival, I believe it's playing on the 27th of July at 6 30. I did look that up. So you can definitely Legend. catch out the Cinema Nova. So, uh, yes, and it's man. also um, on online as well. They've got the streaming passes. So if you buy the streaming pass, you can watch it from, from your own home, essentially wherever. Yeah. So, yeah. Awesome. Well, Jake. Thanks so much for taking the time and chatting with us. This has been very enjoyable. And um, and congratulations on the doco. It was an absolute winner. It was so yes, cool. Yeah. Thanks, for, thanks for watching it and thanks for caring about it. It's, um, yeah, just editing it at home, you know, for like two years with a mate. So we do it. Wow. I, I like to, you know, yeah, I don't, I don't want to talk it down, but I often will just be, I say what it is, you know, like we, we did it ourselves and it's, it's our thing and, um, people often expect the worst that and like, oh no, it's going to be terrible. And they watch and like, oh no, it's quite good. So hearing your feedback, it means a lot. And thanks for um, amplifying what, what it is that we're doing. Appreciate it. Our absolute pleasure, Absolutely. mate. This has been great. It's been fantastic. Thank you very much. Thanks, Jake. Thanks for your time. All good. Talk to you guys. You come to Melbourne. Now you've already seen it. You don't need to. Don't come. Yeah. yeah. No, <laughs> no, honestly, no. man, like, and just, yeah, what you were saying about like, you know, it's a, you were making it yourself and you weren't sure how it would be like, it was honestly um, awesome, man. Like I 
we we were well with done. Um, the yeah. Doco Festival, but yeah, when we watched it, I was like, oh man, this is awesome. That was my my pick for sure out of oh, all thanks. the Docos we watched. Yeah. Cool. So, yeah. So and it was really good. What what just side note, what one should I check out? Uh, oh, there's there was yeah. a lot of good ones, man. Like there's the lots 10, of good ones. Ten count yeah. was pretty cool. Um, yeah, there's one on I'm a big Daniel Day Lewis fan. There's one on that. There's actually oh, yeah. one, that, I'd one be keen on the, in that. There's a fire one on the uh the oh, fires in yeah, Australia yes. that was um uh I've got the, yeah, got the name yeah. of it. Um but yeah, yeah, um we'll talk about it on this episode as well. But um great. But yeah, that that was really powerful, some powerful stories in that about you know the people who were in there fighting and and how it affected families and stuff like that. So okay, psychological yeah. post post fire, yeah, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like a, it's a very um, harrowing watch, not an uplifting yes. one, perhaps. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. Because it's real. It's yeah, 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 for, for sure. sure. No lot yeah. of hope. Is there any hope in it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, there are some great stories in there. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, no, a there is. yeah, just a sprinkling else. of hope. Yeah, <laughs> Jeez, a sprinkling of hope. Yeah, all right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, brutal man. Brutal. I'm off. I'm actually seeing Damon tomorrow. We're hanging out. He hasn't seen the film yet, and he's oh, like, wow. and every premiere, he's like, I'm like. It's like oh, he's like I can't like he can't come because he's he's got his movie premiere and stuff. So we've been doing this dance for the last like four months, and he everyone's telling him it's so good. Like you're in it. Like you did so good. And he's like yeah, I yeah. have not seen this thing. And like <laughs> so we're meeting tomorrow and we're yeah we're setting up and he's got like a whole un, un, the downstairs we're darkening it, bringing the projector. We're gonna have the screening in his house. Uh. So. So we, speaking speaking oh, we, of him, if, if people haven't seen his films, he does some fantastic stuff. I mean, yeah. that, that recent one, I went to the cinemas and watched that as well around where he made it for his um, his daughter, I think it was, about, um, you know, I guess the, the mm. current climate and, um, yeah, the outlook. Yeah. And it was, yeah, it was pretty... That was really powerful. Yeah, pretty powerful as well. And, and then obviously the sugar fi- film and stuff like that. So definitely check it out if you haven't seen those. So. Yeah. Yeah, different. It's a different... It, different thing yeah leading a story with it's not like a hope but like it's like not just a fear-based motivation for change but like you have to we have to state what is there like what is the i don't use the word enemy but what is the the shadow that's looming we need to know the the catalyst and the context but really me like making it be a solutions based and and a real tangible journey like that's that's a powerful thing that that damon did with 2040 for sure yeah, I think I would be I would be be lying if I didn't say it inspired us to be like, well, let's let's approach this more with a a um what are the solutions that exist that we could yeah. have, you know? Yep. Um, yeah, rather than just being a doom and gloom climate change. Mm. Like, yeah. Plenty of those. Yeah, hundred percent. And people get like this kind of get sick of hearing that, like, or or they get maybe not sick, but they just get used to it. So it's when yeah. you come in with actual what we can do. Solutions. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah. So yeah, mm. hats off, Damon, and uh, yeah, yeah. Mm. See what he thinks. I don't know if it, you put that quote in there. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> no, we'll That's see. not my good side. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Fully. It's gonna yeah. be great. I can't wait to uh, see. Yeah. Dude, the best. Well, yeah, thanks again, man. And um, yeah, we might even see you, you know, when you're down in Melbourne, uh, we'll sit, come to an in-hearts wake show and, and see yeah. you guys rock out, man. Cause I, yeah. I'd heard of you guys, but I hadn't heard a lot of your music. So it's made me go down a rabbit hole and I'm going through all your that catalog too it's awesome oh wow that's a dark underground catalog <laughs> yeah yeah it's great man i like the heavy stuff chuck it on yeah, doing workouts awesome. best. yeah yeah it's got a play saying yeah 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 and live it's 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 the genre the whole genre is meant to be experienced live because you yeah. feel it in your body rather than like you know at a low volume or even head it's like yeah it's a very body sensation primal yeah. um yeah music. yeah, yeah. Definitely. all right boys you guys rock awesome time. man take care thanks jake yeah see you jake